you know, let me say this. Isaiah Thomas is a hell of a player, an unbelievable competitor. He's a warrior, everything he's going through right now. He had a hell of a game tonight. But when you're allowed to discontinue your dribble on every possession, he is impossible to guard. He's impossible to guard when you're able to put your hand underneath the ball and take two or three steps and put it back down. It's impossible uh, to guard him in those situations. So, was Fred Hoiberg right? Is Isaiah Thomas constantly getting away with an illegal dribble? If you read this a certain way, it sounds like Hoiberg is accusing Thomas of cheating, isn't he? I'm Coach Nick, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I went through a ton of Isaiah clips from the series to find out whether or not there were some shenanigans going on, or is his dribbling just the run-of-the-mill, normal, creative rule-bending that we've seen for decades in the NBA. And if you want to see this series in person, then allow me to suggest SeatGeek. Their app is the best place to buy and sell sports and concert tickets. It's easy to find Celtics tickets. Each ticket has a grade so you can immediately find underpriced seats. And best of all, you can see the vantage point of the actual seat. So download the app now and use my promo code VBALL to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Don't use Simmons or Zach Lowe's or Woj's code. Use VBALL and get the best deal on the best part of the NBA season. Isaiah Thomas' dribbling moves can be divided up into two distinct categories. His crossover dribble, which he uses as a change of direction attack to the basket, and the hesitation, which allows him to continue going in the same direction after throwing off the timing of his defender. In this first round series, we've seen a couple of wicked crossovers from Isaiah, like this one on Jimmy Butler in the open court. At first glance, it looks like a typical high crossover right to left, but let's examine a little closer and frame by frame. You can see here that Isaiah gets his hand behind the ball with his fingers starting to get underneath it. The ball does travel up as it goes across his body, indicating the thrust coming from underneath the ball. This move doesn't have a huge effect on Butler, who froze for a beat, allowing Thomas to blow right by him for the and one. In game two, Isaiah hit Dwayne Wade with a crossover that left him standing by himself at the top of the key while IT was floating it in. But this is an example of why Hoiberg is so frustrated. He's allowed to discontinue his dribble on the hesitation before crossing over. By bringing his left hand over, it makes it seem like he's going to pull up for the jump shot. That freezes Wade, but it also allows his right hand to get underneath the ball as it pauses. Once Wade commits, he can now throw the ball out front and he's off to the races. It got a bit absurd when Thomas jogs over the half court line, then as Butler reaches to deflect the ball, he basically picks it up with two hands before continuing to dribble with his right. The slot official is 15 feet away, but somehow missed it. Now let's look at the hesitation moves, since they are the most tricky of them all. He uses it here off the pick and roll to freeze both Lopez and Wade, and this just looks like he stopped dribbling for a whole beat before dashing to the basket for the nifty little reverse. From this angle, the first dribbles held an extra beat with his hand more towards the back of the ball, and the next dribble, he lets it bounce almost up to his shoulder. The thing is, his hand stays behind the ball where he just lets it flutter up. In the fourth, he isos on the Bulls' best defender in Jimmy Butler, with two straight hezzy dribbles, and the second one, watch the elbow drop down to even with his forearm, indicating the ball is now above his hand. He brings his left hand forward to simulate a jump shot, and that's all the room he needs to blow by Butler and right to the rim. This was a particularly vicious sham god-like move, where he attacks two players with what appears to be an inside-out move, but he switches hands after the bounce, which confused Cannon to the point where he just stands there. On this change of pace move, Isaiah again lets the ball dribble above his waist, daring Butler to reach in. Even though Butler doesn't go for it, he's behind the play and Isaiah is at the basket before anyone can react fast enough to stop him. Again, you can see how the elbow lowers to even with the forearm, indicating the hand is below the ball before he turns it back over and into the dribble attack. Here's a quick example of how Isaiah likes to flex his wrist to get his fingers underneath the ball, allowing him to take two or three steps in between each dribble. I think this one may have gotten Hoiberg off his seat because a big guy like Robin Lopez just can't stay with him in the best of circumstances. Here, Isaiah cradles the ball behind him while he skips to his next step. On this one, the actual dribble didn't gain much of an advantage, but the play sure resulted in one for the Celtics. 
On this final play, if you watch it in real time, it doesn't look like anything unusual as Isaiah tries to turn the corner before getting a nice bounce pass for a layup from Horford. But when you watch it in slow motion, it's almost funny how he suspends the dribble for a few steps, enabling him to cover a lot of ground while the dribble is essentially discontinued, but no call. So in the end, will the referees listen to Fred Hoiberg's complaints and dare call a carry on one of the most exciting and dynamic players in the NBA? Could they possibly justify changing the way they've called the game for decades in order to enforce a rule as old as the game itself? Of course, these are problematic, and players are gaining more and more of an advantage every year that goes by. But this is also an entertainment industry, and the fans don't watch the games to hear the shrill whistle of stop play. So Bulls fans, don't expect any radical changes during this series, and Celtics fans, sit back and enjoy more blatant carrying by Isaiah Thomas.